Peter, welcome to the program and thanks for joining us. A uh, bit of rain around the place at the moment, which I guess the farmers will be quite pleased with. Yeah, I think so, Mark. I think it's good to see some rain. Um, you know, I think uh, if you look at the uh, soil moisture maps around the country, there's still a lot of areas that are quite dry. So uh, getting some rain and getting the soil moisture up will be great for farmers. Um, and even though it's a bit colder, it's, you know, it's still uh, good feed utilisation. You know, it's been a pretty good winter so far, but farmers looking to the spring to make sure we get some good rain now to, to get those soil moisture levels up. What about uh, the bull sales now? They're uh, coming to their conclusion? Yeah, so you know, our genetic sales and uh, all the on-farm bull sales run predominantly through May and June. They're pretty well all finished now. Um, yeah, I think most of our breeders will be very pleased with the um, both the clearance rates and the prices, pricing being very, very good across the country. Um, but I think also a lot of those breeders have put a lot of effort into the genetics that will give good performance. But I suppose the, the very uh, pleasing factor is now the commercial guys also recognising that buying uh, well-bred bulls and bulls with good um, potential, putting them into their commercial herds, is also adding value to their commercial business. So I would be surprised if there'd be many of our um, clients that have sold bulls this year that wouldn't be uh, pretty happy with the uh, with the sales um, over the May June period. Has M. Bovis affected that in a way? Are people sort of sticking with tried and true rather than do you know doing anything risky? No, I don't think so, Mark. I think farmers are managing M. Bovis uh, pretty well. I think farmers recognise the risk, um, and certainly our bull breeders recognise that having you know closed uh, herds in their cases is uh, adding value as well because you can buy with confidence from those breeders knowing that they haven't had any. Um, introduced stock in the last uh, 12 to 18 months, maybe in some cases possibly never had introduced stock or bred on farm. So mm -hmm. yeah, farmers conscious of, of bovis, very conscious of it when they're buying bulls. Um, but I think our breeders do a great job of particularly where they've got closed heads. Now, um, the market conditions generally at the moment, uh, how's it looking? Um, sheep market continues to you know, meet, or, meet or beat all expectations. I see one of the meat companies just announced a uh, contract at $9 a kilo for the month of August, which is you know it's probably pretty well unheard of, I think, um, in the past. Um, cattle prices starting to firm. I think the schedules are starting to go up. Um, we're seeing more cattle starting to come out. I think I predicted over the last two or three times we've talked that you know as we got closer to the spring that the markets would increase. Mm. Really well supported by international markets, so um, not surprised to see those schedules go up. Probably a little surprised to see nine dollars a kilo for lamb, but I think that uh, you know this this is really a reflection of what's happening in the international markets and the demand for, for you know good lamb, good beef. Um, predominantly out of Asia but also a global trend as well. Can you see that sort of price becoming more a norm um, with the fact that the, 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 the sheep flock is sort of uh, is diminishing? Uh, yeah I think the prices around that you know that sort of maybe that seven dollar six fifty to seven dollar mark is in the peak of the season could well be um, something that's very sustainable you know the, as I say the demand is there globally the inter national markets are strong so that's what's driving it um, it's not just a, an internal shortage it's as a global shortage of, of I suppose of protein really now one of your products of course is deferrable that's back in uh, back in vogue at this time of year yep sure so dairy farmers looking to buy bulls for tail out and um, the deferrable products there um, product we've used for a number of years and means basically that farmers can uh, buy bulls now pay later um, so that scheme's here. If people want to use it, please don't hesitate to contact their local agent or their local regional livestock manager who will be able to help them out. But uh, people that have used that product in the past will be very familiar with it, very simple to use, um, and a great product to just assist with cash flow through the spring and early summer. And uh, finally, do you give the Black Caps a chance uh, on Sunday? Well, I didn't give them a chance to get in against India, Mark. I um, sort of watched the first bit of it, went to bed, turned the radio on, and woke up and heard that they were on top. So. Who knows? But the way England played last night, we'd certainly have to play, you know, equally as well against England as we did against India. But um, yeah, I think uh, it's a great tribute to the to Kane Williamson the way he just led that team and thinks things through. Very different captain to what Brendan McCullum was. But uh, who knows? Um, I'd like to think they're going to win. If they do, fantastic. But yeah. it's going to be a really, really good game, I think, between England and, and New Zealand.